Hey, let's go chess. That's it. That's the intro. YouTube is hard, bro. Let's start with drawing the board. A chess board is an 8x8 eight eight grid with 64 squares in total, with the squares alternating between a dark and a light color. We write a function that uses loops to define the board by rows and columns. We then use the modular operation to determine if the sum of a row and a column is divisible by 120, so alternate between drawing light and dark colors. Yeah, that's just so satisfying. Now we need pieces. To draw the pieces, we need to represent our board in an array of zeros, with each index representing a square on the board. To draw a piece on the square, we need to find the index of that square in our array and set the value to a two-character string signifying the exact piece. The first character being the color, and the second being what type the piece is. This, for example, is a white king. Coincidentally, since the knight also starts with a K, we went out to use an N to indicate it. Respect the king, you stupid horse. Now, this isn't the standard way to do this. Some say it's actually better to use a matrix than an array, but f*** that, it's my video, I do what I want. Now, let's try moving pieces. We don't need to apply any rules for now, and we just need to be able to drag a piece from square to square. Now, this involves three event listeners. The first one, mouse down, handles all the code that happens when we click and hold on a piece. Mouse move handles the code that occurs when we drag a piece, and mouse up, which I'm sure you must have guessed, happens when we release a piece. When we click on a piece, we need to store two informations. One is the piece itself, and two is the piece's current square. We then use this data in the mouse move events to empty the piece's current square and draw a shadow piece, if you may, that will follow the mouse around. And once we release the piece, we use the coordinates of the mouse to find the index of the square we're moving the piece to, using this utility function I already made, and simply set the value of the square to the drag piece. Now, for the rules. To do this, we need to make a function that takes two parameters, a piece and its current square index, and make it do some fancy calculations using this data and ultimately return an array of indexes which are the possible squares the piece can go to. The pawn, for example, can only move forward one step at a time, although it does get one chance to move two steps from a starting square. And finally, it captures one square diagonally. Um, excuse me? What about on pass? So we write a calculate pawn move function that takes the current square and its side, then we simply subtract it from its current index to get the square in front of it. If you're wondering why 8, well remember the bodies in our read that counts down from index 0 to 63. So if the pawn is here, for example, we just count backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But keep in mind, we're only subtracting for the white pawns, since they go upwards on the board. For the black pawns, we have to add 8 instead, because they go downwards. As for jumping two squares forward from a starting square, we just need to check if the current index is any of these values to tell if it is a starting square. And if it is, we add or subtract 16, since it's, you know, two squares forward then we add that to the list of possible squares to move to. As for captures, it's a similar approach, only this time we're adding or subtracting 7 and 9, which are the numbers before and after 8. It's the same approach we follow for the other pieces. The rook, for example, just involves subtracting and adding 8 multiple times for the verticals, and for the horizontal movement, we add and subtract 1. The bishops are similar to the pawn captures. It moves diagonally, so we're just subtracting and adding 9s and 7s. The knights, however, are a lot more straightforward in the sense that we know just the right amount to add and subtract from its current square at all corners. We just have to filter out the ones that don't exist on the board before returning the values. The queen doesn't really need her own function since she's basically just a combination of the bishop and the rook, so we can just call both functions to get hers. Now the king, despite the name, is the most useless piece of shit. A coward that can only move or capture one square at a time. Pretty straightforward, few lines of code, no problem with that. But we're not quite done. For movements like the rook and the bishop, we can actually block the attacks of the piece, which means they shouldn't be able to move to any squares behind that piece. Luckily, this isn't too difficult. We just need a function that takes an array of the side's indexes and simply check in the board array if any of the squares are occupied. If there are any, we remove all the squares after the occupied square from the list. This can also include removing the square of the occupying piece itself if it's a piece of the same color, because we can't capture all pieces, obviously. And that's pretty much it for movements. This means we're already 80% done. All that's left is to implement checks. Basically, a check is a move that attacks the king. The idea is to put your opponents in a situation where they have to respond by resolving the check. This could be either moving the king to safety, blocking the attack, or capturing the attacking piece. By the way, this is also how you win a game of chess. You have to trap the king by giving a check that your opponent cannot resolve. It's called a checkmate, I'm sure you've heard of it. Now, after numerous hours of rigorous contemplation on how to execute this feature, I came up with the 200 IQ solution. And you'll see I'm a genius. I call it Danger Squares. These are squares that the king is not allowed to go to because it's under attack. How do we get the danger squares? Well, we simply use the get possible moves function we just created, find the possible moves in advance of all the opponent's pieces, and store it in a player's danger squares array. We do this every time a move is made on the board. And that's basically it. You can now use the indexes on the danger squares to tell if a king is in check or not. 
So if a move your opponent makes causes the current square of your king to be among the least of danger squares, then that means you're in check. And if you make a move that doesn't resolve the check, we simply reverse it until you do. The reason why this is such a good solution is because it automatically covers for things like discovered attacks, so you actually don't need any extra logic for those. The beauty of programming, baby. And we're done. But so you don't have to play by yourself, that will be too boring, I actually plugged the board to a chessboard. Uh, how does that work again? Right, we need to send the current position of the board as a request, and it responds by sending us the best possible move to play. We do that by using something called a fence string, which is just a long string of text that describes the position of a chessboard. Each row is separated by a forward slash. The numbers are the amount of empty squares, the letters indicate pieces, uppercase case meaning whites, and lowercase case meaning black. That's basically the gist, um, just look up fence strings, it's not difficult. So I had to write two functions, one that converts our board array to a fence string, and another that takes a move as a parameter and applies it to the game. There weren't any decent APIs to use, so I actually had to write one myself using Node.js and something called a child process module to communicate with the exe file. Build to start stockfish process. The f oh, sorry, I misspelled Windows. Love those kinds of errors. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the source code is in the description. I was supposed to make a live demo so you guys can actually try it out without having to run the code. Um, but that means I'll have to host my server and I honestly can't be bothered doing that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.